the Cavite mutiny controversy. So are you familiar with this um, history? Do you know what happened during this time? Okay. So before that, what do you mean by mutiny? Mutiny means a rebellion against authority. It comes from a, an old verb, mutin, which means revolt. So this happened during the Spanish-American colonization. So we have, we've been under the Spanish, and um, this is the time when the Filipinos revolt. So, ang pag-aaklas sa Cavite ng 1872. Sa lungsod na ito, noong ikadalawampo ng Enero, 1872, nag-aklas ang mga 200 Filipin Filipino sa pamumuno ni Sarmento La Madrid bilang pagtutol sa pagpapairal sa kanila ng pagbabayad ng buwis at sa pagpuwing sa kanilang karapatang mataliwas sa sapilitang paglilingkod Bunga ng pag-aaklas ay ang pagpaparakip, paglilitis at pagbitay sa mga pareng Jose Burgos, Jacinto Zamora, at Mariano Gomez noong ikalabing pito ng Pebrero, 1872, sa bagong bayan, Nayoy Rizal Park, Manila. So, yan. Um, on January 20th, 1872, the Cavite Arsenal Revolt happened. So this is the Ampaga-class. So what happened during this time? About 200 men comprised of soldiers, laborers of the arsenal, and residents of Cavite. So the Filipino soldiers, laborers of the arsenal, and the residents of Cavite, headed by Sergeant La Madrid, rose in arms and assassinated the commanding officer and Spanish officers of Fort San Felipe, the Spanish arsenal in Cavite, Philippines. So this area, this place. So the soldiers, the laborers of in this place created a revolt. The insurgents were expecting support from the bulk of army. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. The news about the mutiny reached authorities in Manila and General Izquierdo immediately ordered the reinforcement of Spanish troops in Cavite. After two days, the mutiny was officially declared subdued. So it was an unsuccessful. So after almost like in less than a month, on February 17, 1872, the three priests, which we are familiarly known as Gomborza, Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Jacinto Zamora, they were killed. They were summarily trial, tried and sentenced to death. So they were just, they, there was a short trial and then sentenced to death at Bagumbayan, Philippines in the morning by Garote. So this is Garote, the beheading, because they are being linked as instigators of the Cavite Arsenal Revolt. So silang pasanginlan. Jose Rizal dedicated his novel El Filibosterismo to the three priests, and the Cavite mutiny was a major factor in the awakening of nationalism among the Filipinos. But what is the issue here? There are two accounts or perspective in reference to the death of the three Filipino martyrs, and not all Filipinos know this. So there is a Spanish perspective in 1872, Cavite mutiny. And there is also the Filipino version of the Cavite incident. This is according to the historian Chris Antoinette Paidad Pugay. So let's start with the Spanish perspective. So according to him, Jose Montero y Vidal, a prolific Spanish historian, he documented the event Cavite mutiny and highlighted it as an attempt of the Indios or the Filipinos to overthrow the Spanish government in the Philippines. According to him, the idea of attaining their independence, it was towards this goal that they started to work with the powerful assistance of certain section of the native clergy. And Governor General 
or the Governor General Rafael Izquierdo, he was the Governor General at that time, he magnified the event and made use of it to implicate the native clergy, the priests, which was then active in the call for secularization. Say secularization, the, uh, the removal of laws. He reported to the King of Spain that the rebels wanted to overthrow the Spanish government to install a new Harry in the likes of Father Burgos and Zamora. The native clergy, who out of animosity against the Spanish friars, conspired and supported the rebels and enemies of Spain. So it has been clearly determined, this is according to Governor Esquerdo, it has not been clearly determined if they plan to establish a monarchy or a republic because the Indians have no word in their language to describe this form of government. He really sees the Filipinos very lowly, whose head in Filipino would be called Hari, but it turns out that they would place at the head of the government a priest, and that the head selected would be Jose Borgos or Jacinto Zamora. The Spanish, so this, so the Gumborza died, it, by Garote in Bagumbayan. So this is how how bloody that time, that um, Cavite mutiny. So both Montero and Esquerdo scored out that the abolition of privileges enjoyed by the workers of Cavite arsenal, such as non-payment of tributes and exemption from forced labor, were the, were the main reason of the revolution. And but they also added that the event in 1872 was planned earlier and was thought of it as a big conspiracy among educated leaders, mestizos, abogadillos, or native lawyers, residents of Manila and Cavite, and the native clergy. So, th so they actually magnify the situation, but they know that this is the main reason, the non-payment of the removal of uh, the privileges, the non-payment of tributes and exemption from forced labor. Esquerdo removed that. And so that's the reason why the Filipinos revolt. But they also added, Montero and Esquerdo also added that it's also beyond that because they have planned it earlier and it's a big conspiracy among the educated leaders, the mestizos, um, these people. It's a big conspiracy, they said. And so, on February 4, 17th, 1872, in an attempt of the Spanish government and the Frelocracia to instill fear among the Filipinos so that they may never commit such a daring act again, hence the Comborza were executed. So that's very tragic. And that event was tragic but served as one of the moving forces that shaped Filipino nationalism. Now let's go to, that is the Spanish perspective. Now we will discuss the Filipino version of the Cavite incident. So Dr. Trinidad Herminigildo Pardo de Tavera, a Filipino scholar and researcher, wrote the Filipino version of the bloody incident in Cavite. He said that the incident was a mere mutiny by the native Filipino soldiers and laborers of the Cavite arsenal. Who turned out to be dissatisfied with the abolition of their privileges. They blamed government Esquerdo's cold-blooded policy, such as the abolition of privileges of workers, so the removal of the privileges of the workers and native army members of the arsenal, and the prohibition of the founding of school of art, founding, funding of school of arts and trades for the Filipinos, which the general believed as a cover-up for the organization of a political club. So he prohibited the founding of School of Arts and Trades. Tavera believed that the Spanish friars, the priests, the Spanish priests, and Izquerdo used the Cavite mutiny as a powerful lever 
by magnifying it as a full-blown conspiracy, conspiracy. They made it a big deal involving not only the native army, but also included residents of Cavite and Manila, and more importantly, the native clergy to overthrow the Spanish government in the Philippines. So in the Philippine version, it was just those workers who were dissatisfied with abolition of privileges. That was the main reason of the re revolution. But the Spanish priests, friars, and Esquerdo magnify it, made use of it as if they, they said that it's a big conspiracy of the residents of Cavite and Manila and not just those workers. It is also noteworthy that during that time, the central government in Madrid, that this is where, this is the office where the, the Spaniards um, report. So this is the central government or the brain or the head of the, Span of the Spaniards. During that time, they announced its intention to deprive the priors of all the powers of intervention in matters of civil government and the direction and management of educational institutions. So they've announced it that they will remove the power from the friars. And in the intention of installing reforms, it welcomed an educational decree offered by Sigismundo Moret, Moret promoted the infusion of sectarian schools run by the friars into a school called Philippine Institute. The decree proposed to improve the standard of education in the Philippines by requiring teaching positions in such schools to be filled by competitive examinations. This improvement was warmly received by most Filipinos in spite of the native clergy's zest for secularization. So they, they, they accepted it. They don't have any uh, dispute somehow. But this turnout of events was believed by Tavera prompted the friars to, to do something drastic in their dire desire to maintain power in the Philippines. So what they did, did since the friar, fearing that their influence in the Philippines would be a thing of the past, took adva advantage of the incident and presented it to the Spanish government as a vast conspiracy organized throughout the archipelago with the object of destroying Spanish sovereignty. The Vera sadly confirmed that the Madrid government came to believe that the scheme was true without any attempt to investigate the real facts or extent of the alleged revolution reported by Esquerdo and the friars. So the central government in Madrid just believe what Esquerdo and the friars reported to them without any investigation. And so they convicted educated men who participated in the mutiny. They were sentenced to life imprisonment. So these others who were implicated, such as Joaquin Pardo de Tavera, she was also one of them, Antonio Maria Regidor, Jose Basa, and Pio Basa, and other Filipino lawyers were suspended from the practice of law, arrested and sentenced to life imprisonment at the Marianas Island because the Spanish were afraid that they would be, that, that the revolution is to remove them from power. Members of the native clergy headed by Gumborza were tried and executed by Garote. And this episode leads to the awakening of nationalism and eventually to the outbreak of Philippine Re Revolution of 1896. So because of what happened, because of the blood, bloody revenge and bloody action by the Spaniards, it pushes the Filipino to really fight back. So Edmund Pla, I don't know how to pronounce his family name, he's a French writer, he agreed on Tavera's account that the motivation or the reason for the Cavite mutiny were just mere dissatisfaction of the abolition of privileges. And according to him, 
the arrival in Manila of General Isguerdo put a sudden end to all dreams of reforms. Such a policy must really end in a strong desire on the part of the other to repress cruelty. So that is what happened during the Cavite mutiny.